Well, hello. My name is Jeff Williams, and my friend Jane Bond said that you girls needed some tips on how to draw faces so that you can make a wanted poster, which sounds like an incredible project. So I'm going to help teach you a few skills that can help you catch this criminal, okay? I think together we can get this sucker caught. So let's start with an egg shape, okay? Try to make it nice and even from side to side. Okay, so we've got a rough little... Now don't make anything that is going to be really hard to erase, okay? Just light, light sketching. And look, that's kind of hard to erase, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll get the idea. So now what we're going to do, let me get that right in the center of the screen for you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split that in half. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to try to get it somewhat in half. So if we go a line from here all the way down to here, then halfway is roughly somewhere right in there. And then we're going to split it in half again. So from here to here to the chin, right there is about halfway. And then uh, we're going to see how we do here, but we're going to go down here and split it in half again. And then we're going to just see how this works out, okay? Okay, this first line is the line that your eyes will fall on. And then you didn't know that your eyes were halfway down, did you? It's, it's kind of a weird little concept. So then when we come down here, we're going to put our nose just above that line. And then down here, this is kind of our bottom lip. And we'll see how we do, okay? Hope it, keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, so if we know this is our, our eyes, so let's start with, a, with an eye. This is a really dark pencil, so it's not erasing very well. I have to apologize. So when you start an eye, start by drawing the lower lid because it's easier that way, okay, for most eyes. And we're just going to draw it just like this. Almost like the person is asleep, like they have their eyelids closed. Now, the space between one eye and the other eye is about the distance of an eye. So let's look here. Let's just try it this way. So somewhere right in there. And if you wanted to be really good, you could get your ruler out. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so that's getting us started on our eyeballs. I should have got a lighter pencil to draw with. I may still do that. Okay. So, now, we got that going. Now let's add the top eyelid. The top eyelid kind of has a bit of a dramatic slope at the beginning, followed by a gradual little arc down to the outer one. Okay, those aren't exactly the same size, but this is demonstration only. We're not going to sell this, are we? Okay, and I don't want, I feel the judgments, okay? Stop judging me. All right, here we go. So let's kind of, let's firm that up. In case you haven't realized, getting eyes exactly the same from side to side is a tough thing to do. It's really tough, actually. What is this? That's a pin. That's not going to help me. Okay, so... Now, let's 
sketch in the eyebrows. Eyebrows usually start above the inner part of the eye, just a little ways up. And then they typically just kind of go around to the side right here. If you had a little line that would go out to the temple, that's about where that eyebrow would end. All right. <clears throat> Now you're going to want to ask the person, hey, is the, or did the person have bushy eyes or eyebrows? Did they have real thin eyebrows? Were they drawn on? You know, I see that every now and then. So let's say that they were kind of bushy. And of course, they, the hair, all you got to do is look in the mirror. The hair folds outwards, right? Okay, so now we got bushy eyebrows. I really hate this eye right here. I hate it. And it won't go away. I can't get it to go away. My apologies, folks. I had to, <clears throat> I had to switch pencils. The other one was just way too dark for sketching. And I had to fix that eyeball. I couldn't stand the eyeball. So... Now I'm, I'm more comfortable and I'm in a better place. So let's try to keep on rocking and rolling. Okay, so we got the eyes kind of placed a little bit. Now usually you're going to be having to ask, you know, did they have big eyes? Did they have smaller eyes? Were they uh, Caucasian? Were they Asian? You, they all have different shapes of eyes. So that's important to understand. But in general, you just have the nice little circles towards the, the edges of the eyes. All right. That looks like a pretty pleasant person. It really doesn't look like a criminal yet, does it? Okay. It may not ever look like a criminal. You, you never know what they look like. Okay, so let's just sketch in the nose. Now, usually there's kind of a ball at the, at the end. And then there's two little balls on the sides. And right in the middle, there's a little bone that kind of is almost shaped like a diamond, but you don't get to see the whole bone. Well, I'm just leaving marks. There we go. So sometimes you can see part of it. Sometimes you can't. Now, this is a good time to ask. What kind of nose do they have? Is it a big nose? If it's a big nose, well, that gets bigger, doesn't it? Was it a really sharp-featured person with a thin little nose? Well, then it becomes much smaller. Did they have larger nostrils? Well, then... You'd draw them way out here, wouldn't you? But if it's a sharp-featured person, probably the nostrils are not all that big either. So we'll just pretend it's kind of small. Right? And we'll do that. Now, let's just keep on rocking. If it's a sharp-featured person, this little bone here is not going to be real big either, is it? It'll be just a little hiccup, I think. This person kind of looks like a weasel, huh? Like a, yeah, like a weasel. There's always a, a little, little duct right there at the inner part of the eye. Okay, now. Let's go to the mouth, okay? So if this is our rough lip, then you're always going to have a little bit of, a, of an arch there. Not all lips, but a little arch, and they come down to the corners. 
Now here's what's important to know about the corners of the mouths. They lie usually in a direct line under the pupil. So that's usually the corner of the mouth. So that'll kind of give us a little bit of general guidelines on how to place the mouth. That other pencil was so dark. I'm just going to grab about that through the whole drawing here, guys, girls. Just make it even on each side. Usually the bottom lip has a little bit of a curve like that. Okay, now, what if the person had thin lips? Well, or a bigger bottom lip, but a thin top lip. Well, let's thin it down a little bit, shall we? Maybe even a bigger bottom lip than that. Since I'm filming this, I'm not able to turn my page around to make sure that I got it nice and straight. So you're just going to have to get the whole idea, the gist, and then we'll go from there. At the corners, you got a little bit of a, a little of a dimple thing. Then we've always got a line, usually. Now, if the person's younger, it's not very a prominent but if it's an older person they'll have a line that comes down here like a cheek line comes from on top of the nostril down just a gentle little curve curves this way curves that way see what I mean curves this way curves that way gives you a little bit of that then you might ask them um, you know, did they have bags under their eyes? Well, older folks for sure. Yeah, <laughs> take take my word for it. I'm one of those older folks. It might have some bags under their eyes. It always starts at the middle of the eye, like that. You might ask them about their uh, their cheeks. Did they have big prominent cheeks, or were they just kind of gentle curves here? So the cheek usually starts over here by the ear. And comes down like that. Yeah, a little bit like that. And then you'll have some of this going too, especially if they're older. So you see kind of this line here, almost like a V with some curves to it. So, all right, because this is the jaw, the jaw's got to fit in there somewhere. And that's another thing. Was it a nice round face that would come out here like this? Or was it a good egg feature, a good sharp uh, curve? Then you would ask maybe about, well, everybody's got some of this going on in here on top of their lip. And you might ask about a chin. Did they have a little pointy chin? Because if it was pointy, It'd just be like this, right? If it were more of a, what we would call a stronger chin, well, it might be little, two little bumps there that go out and then start up towards the jaw. Let me get rid of that line. Lots of options. Think about how many billions of people are in the world and really, honestly, none two are exactly alike. So there's tons of options. Um, so then you also have this top part of the chin. Right. So did the chin have a dimple in it? Well, if it did, let's put a dimple in it. Okay, now we got a dimple in the chin. Um, eyelids usually there's just a the bottom one it's just very kind of faint really the top lid usually starts right there and will come around 
Just do your best to make it even on both sides. And then eyelashes. They usually go, or were they long, were they short? Did they even have eyelashes? But they usually go in a little sweeping motion outwards, like this. If this is a guy, he's got really long eyelashes. <laughs> but I'm trying to show you. Okay. For bottom eyelashes, they're just little, kind of little dashes, little dots. They're not nearly as important. Okay, might as well put in the, we'll just put it dead in the middle there. This, now that kind of makes them look creepy, huh? For blue eyes, you'd probably leave that mostly blank. Obviously for brown eyes or the darker eyes, you'll want to just draw those out like, like rays from the center going outwards. Now there are really, really good portrait artists where they can put the glisten in the eye and they got little white drops and you can uh, do that but for this purpose I think you I think you got what I mean okay now we want to know about forehead you know this is a there's generally a little shape in the middle there and a little bit of that but you really don't have to put that stuff in there as much into a, a simple drawing but you do want to ask them about the hairline so what kind of hair did they have first of all were they bald right our work is real simple if they were bald um, if they had just real parted on one side you know let's let's part it oh before we do that Let's get to the ears real quick before we put the hair in, okay? The ears, like if you were looking at somebody from the side, the ears would start about halfway between the front of the head and the back of the head, uh, right along the jawline. And they lie between the eyebrows and the bottom of the nose. So this, and they go outwards like this, and then inwards. So, that's what your ears, or his, or her ears, would look like. That ear turned out all right. I'm kind of happy with that ear. All right, let's go whoop, right there, and whoop, right there. Okay. All right. We're getting close, folks. We're getting close. So, again, let's get back to the hair. Of course, the hair is going to stand off a little bit from where the scalp was, right? You can always erase that scalp line if you like, if it bothers you. And it kind of bothers me, so I'll erase it. You can pull hair. If it's a shaggy, a shaggy person, you can pull that hair over the ear, and you can even erase some of that ear so that you can see. You can demonstrate the, the shagginess. This guy needed a haircut. Okay, did they have sideburns? Maybe. Was their hair fluffy or was it cropped close? Well, this guy, he's a little fluffy. See how far off of the scalp we are here? Maybe he's got some wave to it. Okay, scalp line's starting to make me mad again. Okay. Well, he's got a little wave to it. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe he's like Bieber, and it goes all the way, huh? And he flops it around like all the teenagers do all day long because they can't see your face unless they flop their hair over. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to he's starting to come together a little bit. Some sideburns. Okay. Our, our Bieber criminal. Now, let's see. What if he had just morning stubble or three-day stubble? So we're just going to officially make this a guy, okay? So you just put some dashes in. Guys don't grow hair here usually in these areas. To grow it right here, but nowhere else. You try not to get your hand, if you're right handed, try not to get your hand over into the drawing if you can keep from it, because then you'll start smudging your lines and then you'll have to go back and fuss with it. Okay, we got we are getting close folks. We are getting so close. This may be the quickest drawing I've ever done for somebody. Okay, so now we've got stubble. What if let's see. I got him in a shadow on that phone there. Okay. What if he just had a full-grown beard? Well, let's start growing that in. So beards come down a little bit off the jawline, right? Here the hair goes this direction. We'll just put some indications of a beard. And we'll just keep on keeping on until the beard starts to show itself. Sometimes you got to keep at it a little bit and put some layers in there and all that good stuff. But we'll just keep on trucking here. Beards usually come straight like this and then down. So right here and then across like that. There we go. There we go. Now, you can't have a beard without a mustache unless you're Abe Lincoln. So, let's give him a mustache. And we are just about home free, my friends. Okay. There you go. He really doesn't look like a bad guy. But he is, clearly. So, I hope this helps you all catch that dastardly cookie caper. Good luck, girls. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I helped you out.